hi there. I'm Beth Fries. <laughs> Investigator, explorer, author, bus driver. Those are all job titles. You may know me from series such as 24 Hours in Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen, Conflict in the Serengeti Unveiled, and Help Help, I'm Stuck in a Camel's Bladder, Help. But today we're going to be investigating some of the strangest creatures of all time. The RTI News Team. Indeed, between reports of head news reporter Mary Morrissey being reportedly an anti-mask protester, and our favourite news reporters struggling to work from home, there has never been a better time to investigate the beloved news station. Let's begin. We now have News Director Mary Morrissey in the interrogation room. Oh, my apologies. The interview room. So, Mary, tell us about yourself. <laughs> yes, well, my name is Mary Morrissey and I've been working here as the News Director of Radio Television Ireland for the past 20 years. Interesting, interesting. How has it been working at RTI during a pandemic? Ah, it's been... Grand, you know, I do think it's, you know, ridiculous, this whole having to broadcast the news from home, but you know the government. <laughs> mm, ridiculous. Interesting. Now, Mary, isn't it true that one of the reasons that OTI have been made to broadcast from home is that they were not adhering to the government guidelines in the first place? I... I don't know about that now. I mean, when the masks are preventing us from breathing properly, I think surely we should be allowed to take them off. Mm. Preventing from breathing. Mm. Interesting. Now, there's been a lot of rumours going around about you supporting anti-maskers. Is this true? God, no. Of course not. Of course not. No. Witnesses have come forward and said that they in fact saw you on O'Connell Street participating in an anti-mask protest. With the sign saying, ignore the government, the pandemic is a myth. I mean, people are always lying. That's not true. Right. Well, you also put a picture on your Instagram of you at the anti-mask protest with the following hashtags. Hashtag COVID is a hoax. Hashtag you can't vaccinate it's the truth. It's Instagram really that relevant. <laughs> Hashtag the government can't control us. Hashtag enforcing masks is an oppression. <laughs> Hashtag follow for follow. Hashtag like for like. Considering your use of hashtags, can you really deny these allegations? Look, just because somebody has decided that there's this new virus going around, does that really mean we all have to change the way we do things? If you don't believe in the truth, do you really think it is a good idea for you to be running a news team? Oh, well, of course, I believe in the truth. I'm very passionate about the truth, and that's why I'm so passionate about the anti-Covid campaign. But if your opinions are wrong... What do you mean my opinions are wrong? Just because I don't enforce wearing masks and I don't think there should be minorities in the workplace does not mean that my opinions are wrong. Look, this is just ridiculous and it has nothing to do with my job so I'm not answering these stupid questions anymore. Are we done here? Well, thank you, Mary. Good afternoon, these are today's headlines. Esteemed national broadcaster and fidget Ryan Tuberty appears to have contracted coronavirus. Tuberty appears to have contracted the disease at a cocaine, my apologies, charity event at the Intercontinental Hotel in Sandy Mount County, Dublin. Witnesses from the event alleged that Pat Kenny was seen spitting in Tuberty's strawberry daiquiri. Pat Kenny has been arrested in relation to the incident, which Gardaí are treating as a spit and run. When asked to comment, Pat Kenny said that Gayburn is alive and well, and that Tuberty should rue the day he ever took the job at RTE. While acknowledging the importance of staying home and safe in this troubling time, Tuberty has assured children across the nation that they need not fear and that the toy show will emerge in some form in 2021. The children can look forward to a powdery white, I'm sorry, jolly white Christmas. Over to you, Brenda. 
That's not a direct quote. Brenda, we're on air. I know, Mr. Tubber. He buys products from me. Okay, and after the break, former Love Island star Maura Higgins has reportedly seen a UFO in County Longford. There we've just seen presenters of the One O'Clock News, Kathy O'Sullivan and Brenda Baskin, who you might know if you're unemployed, regularly in dentist waiting rooms, or just old. In this clip, O'Sullivan appeared to be somewhat agitated by her co-host. Footage from a meeting between the two newsreaders and news director Mary Morrissey confirms that O'Sullivan may not be on the best of terms with her co-workers. Let's take a look. Great. Good morning, lads. Um, is it though? It is a good morning. I had seven fish fingers for breakfast. That's that's just lovely, Brenda. <laughs> so I have an interesting story now here for you. It's about the reopening of the Book of Kells. Um, are you familiar with the book? I wouldn't know too much about it now myself. Yes. My grandfather wrote it. I'm, I'm sorry. There's no way it was your grandfather. The Book of Kells was written by monks. Kathleen, settle down now. <laughs> My grandfather was a monk. Okay, well, about the story, um, I've been doing a lot of research and I was thinking an angle we could take is that the college is prioritizing its American tourists over its students. That is to say profit over education. Kathleen, um, that's, that's great and all, but um, I think I've heard enough, it's fine. Uh, Brenda, why don't you tell me what you've got for the story? When I was a child, my grandfather injected me with jellyfish semen, which made me the gift of being able to speak to creatures of the sea and made me a temple for all sea life. I can also speak to seagulls and it may be impartial to COVID. I mean, not much of a concern, it's not real anyways. Uh, or they're using it in the vaccines or whatever they do be saying. Um, anyways, continue. Well, Three of my very close, close friends, Jenny, Rachel and Sarah, live in Trinity. I'm sorry, you're, you're friends with, with students? No, they are seagulls. Seagulls. How, how is that relevant? I will interview my seagull friends about the situation and they can introduce me to their other seagull friends. Um, excuse me? You know what? That's great, Brenda. You've got a lot of material here, and I think that you should take the story. Uh, I'm so sorry. Did I just hear you say that you were giving the story to Brenda? Yes, uh, Kathleen. She's now a terrible reporter. Look at how much research I've done for this. Do you actually think talking to seagulls is the best way to get this story? Um... Yes, I do, actually. Kathleen, what is your home address? Why? Why do you want to know my home address? Why are you so weird? I do not appreciate your tone. <sighs> nepotism. It's nepotism. It's all nepotism. That's what this is. Uh, right, so anyways. <laughs> I'm here with Kathleen O'Sullivan and Brenda Baskin for an exclusive interview. So, Kathleen, talk to me. Why do you have an issue with Brenda being given this story? Well, maybe because she's actually incapable of reporting the news. Incapable. Interesting. Our sources have said you've called her a freak of nature who landed on Earth for unknown reasons. Do you stand by these statements? Well, oh, Barry. I mean, could you please provide the details of Mrs. O'Sullivan's home address? I wish to send her a special surprise in her post box. Neither of you should have my home address. And I, I did say those things, but, but I was infuriated, okay? I mean, she's 
always getting stories that she shouldn't be getting. She's a terrible reporter. Nobody even knows what she's saying half the time. Interesting. Um, in the meeting, you stated that this is, quote, nepotism. What did you mean by this? Well, obviously, she's only getting those stories because she's Dermot O'Shea's niece. And Mary's stuck up his arse, quite frankly. Stuck up his arse. <laughs> Brenda, how do you respond to this? Mrs. Kathleen is a liar. I am a very talented reporter. I lived for seven years up in the cave in the Wicklow Mountains, preparing for this job and gaining qualifications. Interesting, interesting. So, so how did you come to work at OTI? In the year 1990, I was adopted by Dermot O'Shea's sister from a pack of wolves. I, <clears throat> I mean, human family whose name I cannot disclose. After completing very rigorous training, I gained my job here. Interesting, interesting. Uh, we found a copy of your CV on it. It says, hi, Yumi, or my uncle will ruin your career. Do you think that had anything to do with it? By CV, are you referring to my criminal record? No, I am not. And um, I think we will end it there. Thank you for your time, Brenda. Here are Nine O'Clock News presenters, Dharma O'Shea and Joan Fogarty. Good evening and welcome back to the Nine O'Clock News. Hopeman and Dingle say they've resigned themselves to the strong likelihood that Fungi may never return to the West Kerry town. The much-loved bottle-nosed dolphin has been missing for seven days. Boats and divers have been carrying out an extensive search of Dingle Harbour for the past week, but there has been no sign of the famous dolphin. The four metre wild dolphin has been an ever present feature at the mouth of Dingle Harbour since he was first spotted by lighthouse keeper Paddy Ferreter in 1983. On a positive note, marine biologist Kevin Flannery said that fungi may have joined other dolphins or headed out to sea to feed. However, Flannery also stated that it's likely that fungi has picked up an infection and died. Over to you, John. Thank you, Jeremy. A group of teenage boys from Dalkey have begun protesting over the current COVID-19 restrictions. The 18-year-olds have spent the last couple of days marching through the Southside village, declaring that the pandemic is a myth. The group even went so far as to egg actor Matt Damon as he was exiting Super Value after done his weekly shop. One of the attackers came forward and said that while he thinks that Jason Bourne is an absolute legend, it has been far too long since him and his mates have been able to go to Weatherspoons for some vitamin H. And that it's completely ridiculous. Reports have also stated that the community of Dawkey is shocked and appalled by these protests. Actor Matt Damon has spoken out about the attack and concluded that he has no other option but to retreat to the Aran Islands in County Clare until the protests end. Back to you, Jeremid. Thanks, John. Coming up after the break, a middle-aged woman has spotted the Virgin Mary in the cereal aisle of Aldi in Westport County, Mayo. We love to see it, don't we, John? How we do. We just love to see it. We'll see you a lot after the break. But can I take my lunch now, or...? Renowned nine o'clock news presenters Joan Fogarty and Dharma O'Shea appear to be the best of friends. But does Joan too feel that Mary favours Darmod? And is she frustrated by this? Footage from the morning Zoom meeting between the 9 o'clock news presenters reveals that this may very well be the case. Ah, oh, well, Joan, how are you today? Oh, I'm just great. You know yourself, Mary. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing grand too. <laughs> So it seems as though Dearman's running late again. Ah, uh, sure. It's only five past now. Uh, it's no bother at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know, of course. But, you know, I just think it's like a little bit rude or disrespectful, no? I mean, but I'm not up to anything today, so uh, it doesn't matter to me. 
I will see. I actually have a meeting right after this, but don't worry. I'll just tell them I was with Jeremy Doshe, and I'm sure they won't be angry about it at all. I mean, how could they be? She told me it's just great. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he's fantastic. I just love him to bits. And you know, when I hear about all those rumors about him, I just ignore them. I'm just like, you know what, guys, stop. He's a lovely man. Oh, uh, now what's this about rumors? Oh uh, well, you know now, me, Mary, I'm not one to gossip. But I just, I'm always hearing about this rumor about him cheating on his wife or something like that. Having an affair? Well, obviously, you know, like everyone knows he has a wife and kids or whatever, but she's always been a bit of a flirt. <laughs> well, only with certain people, do you know, he, he only flirts with certain people. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you know, I just heard from word of mouth or whatever that he's been seeing someone from... Oh, some- actually, look, I see he's in the waiting room there. We'll just let him in. Now, look. Mm-hmm. Hello, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Slept in again. You know me, huh? Ah, uh, what are you like, Dermot? You're just gas. And how are you anyways? I sure seeing your lovely face always brightens up my day. Would you get away out of that, you devil? <laughs> well, Dermot and Joel, uh, wait till you hear what the big story tonight is. Ah, go on. Put us out of our misery and tell us. Fungi has returned. Are you serious? Jesus, that's great news. Isn't it just? Such a relief. I was honestly worried there for a few days. I'm sorry, can I just like ask a quick question? Why are we centering the nine o'clock news about some dolphin from Dingle? Like, isn't that like the place in the middle of nowhere in like Kerry or something? And now look, John, as a Kerry man myself, I think it's safe to say that Dingle is the place to be. Well, look, it's still in Kerry, Jeremy, and... I sort of had a few news stories in mind for the headlines tonight. I was actually doing some more research on the gender pay gap and how inequalities are still so rampant. Actually, nobody cares about those kind of stories. This is the biggest one we've had in months, years. Really? I mean, everyone wants to hear about Fungi. She knows he's a national hero. He's a bit of an icon, all right. There's even a big bronze statue in the middle of Dingle, I believe. Well, I certainly haven't heard anyone in Black Rock talk about Fungi, but you know, since both of you are mad for the story, I guess I'll go along with it then. I don't, you know, you don't actually need to worry about it at all. Um, we'll just let Dermot have this one, since he is, you know, a carry man. Ah, that's great, boss. <laughs> sure, you know I'm a big fan of Fungi. I'm sorry, sorry, like saying that we're just going to let German do this story on his own? Yes, well, that's what we're saying. Right, well, I'd actually already done up some notes on the topic, you know, I've done a bit of research, so do you just want me to send them on then? Yeah, that would actually be great, John, thank you. <laughs> oh, right, great, I guess I'll just do that then. <laughs> and I've got a few more bits to send them as well. You don't need to worry about doing any of that research, David. We've got you covered. I know that'd be great, girls. <laughs> you know, Mary, sometimes I think you're my guardian angel. <laughs> But you get away out of that now. <laughs> For our star story, we need our star reporter. <laughs> we'll even send you down to a nice B&B there in Dingle and sure it'll come as well. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, and I mean, you know, it could cost, I think we should share a room or whatever. And Joan, I'm sure we could squeeze you in around maybe the 9.50 mark uh, with one of your little stories. Eh, uh, great. <laughs> All excited to go down to Dingle, huh? Yes, it's going to be fabulous and sure I could meet your family. I, no, I'm just joking. I mean, that would be weird, of course. <laughs> Thanks for coming back for another interview, Mary. Hey, you're not going to be asking me about that um, whole empty mask thing today, are you? No. <laughs> not today. <laughs> today is another topic of conversation. Now, in fact, there is some speculation around your relationship with top reporter Darmod O'Shea. It seems to be a case of favouritism. Is this correct? Oh, well, Dermot is just so great, you know. It's hard not to love him. I suppose you could say that we have a special relationship of sorts. Hmm, special relationship. Interesting. There are rumours circulating that the nature of this relationship is romantic. What is your response to these claims? 
Oh, no, no, no. We're just very close, you know. Uh, we're very important to one another, but um, there's nothing romantic going on at all. I mean, if I was his wife, I wouldn't be too concerned about the uh, shared apartment that we have. Uh, that's just for work. Shared apartment? Interesting. I'll follow up with Dermot on that one. Um, no, I don't think he'd have that much to say about it. <laughs> Here we are with Dermot O'Shea and Joan Fogarty. Well... How are you, lads? Hi, Bear. Super excited for this. So, Dermot, talk to me about working at OTI. That's not too bad at all now, is it? Sure, anything a man could want, really. I mean, it was a bit nicer when I could go into the studio, like, free coffee and all that, like. (laughs) Mm, This is the coffee. Anyway, sure, look, to still the finest all the same, I mean, obviously, I've been working here now, Eight or nine years, I'd say, and sure, I've never really been stressed over anything. I've always been given great stories and that, and sure, Mary's very good to me, and sure, all the women are here, you know. You mentioned Mary particularly. Are you two quite close? Ah, sure, Mary's a dot. We get on great now, to be fair, you know. I'm sure, she'll all be cracking jokes and up for the banter and all that. Mm. Um, there have been reports that your relationship is somewhat indecent. Mm-hmm. Looks like you've got yourself in a little bit of a pickle there, dear man. Decent day. What do you mean? That you're having an affair. Do they? Between me and Mary? Jeez, it's not at all. Let's guess. So there's absolutely nothing there? Of course not, sure. Mary's far too old for me. <laughs> oh, no, I'm only messing with you. But now I'm a good Christian man, so. A good Christian man. Interesting. Yes. Sure, I wouldn't be involved in any infidelity of any sorts. Like, my wife would bait the head off me. Like. Your wife would bait the head off you. Interesting. So there's no shared apartment. Shared apartment? I hardly sure. Couldn't afford that nowadays. Is. <laughs> Mary told me you two had a shared apartment. I don't know. Mary must be smoking doobies or something. She's gas, but... I definitely haven't seen this apartment anyway. Smoking doobies. <laughs> well, on to you, Joan. How are you getting on at RTI? Oh, Bear. RTI is just great, you know. Like, the atmosphere, great. The relationship between the co-workers, great. You know, I'm just really enjoying it. Interesting. How about your relationship with Dharma O'Shea? <laughs> sure she loves me, Bear. She can't resist my charm. Isn't that right, Joan? <laughs> oh, Dermot, you're always jumping in with your little jokes, aren't you? Look, yeah, we're great. I love it, really. But anyway, Bear, as I was saying before, I was abruptly interrupted. You know, relationship can be a strong word. It can have levels of meaning, variations of the word, you know. And I think that myself and Dermot have a reasonably good relationship, solid. You know, we've got good chemistry. Uh, We do get on very well now, to be fair. Yeah. Thank you, Jeremy. And you know, we're always just bouncing off one another. It's actually just great. <laughs> bouncing. Interesting. Yeah. You seem slightly irritated at the meeting this morning. Mm, yeah. Um, I don't know if like irritated is the right word to use here. I guess it's just like look it's nothing personal at all like nothing like that but you know sometimes I feel as though I'm not being given the same amount of attention or respect as my male counterpart and I just feel as though like maybe my ideas aren't being heard and I'm rarely being given the big stories you know ah come on now John you're not jealous of me now are you (laughs) stop that now (sighs) Jeremy look I'm not trying to start an argument, you know. I'm just stating that there's been multiple occasions where I feel as though I'm giving this respect and I'm not receiving this respect back. But look, I'm not complaining. I'm simply just stating, you know. Mm. Talking of respect, you call Dahmed an idiotic old man. <laughs> ah, you wouldn't have said that about me now, would you, John? <laughs> of course not, Jeremy. No, 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 not at all. Look, Bear... I think we both know that's been slightly taken out of context, don't you? Out of context. Yeah. You know, that wasn't specifically aimed at Jeremy as a person. It sort of more aimed at, like, men as a whole. 
So you, and I can quote you on this, believe all men are idiotic. No, 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 of course not. I just feel like though gender inequality is a serious issue in the workplace and something that should be talked about more, you know, and obviously I love Jermud and all, but sadly at the end of the day, Jermud is a man. Sadly, he is a man. Oh, look, there was no need for the repetition there, Bear. I'm only joking, of course. Generally, I quite like men. Okay, well, thank you for your time, Joe. Donald, I think we'll leave it there. Great. Jeez, hungry, hungry work there. I'm starving. Sarah, make me a toasty, please. Thank you. After the head of RTI found out about Mary Morrissey's involvement in anti-mask protests, they decided to fire her. She is set to be replaced by Jane Williams, the former director of Fox News of America. Footage from the office Christmas party shows that some of the news presenters might be wary of having a new news director. Oh, of course. He's laid again, like. Is he even coming, like? Uh, no, to be fair, he better show up. I need to explain what the hell this is. Oh, give me strength. How's it going? Uh, Merry Christmas and all that. Yeah? Hi, dear Hi, dear yeah. yeah. Well, sure, look. It's quarter past now, so enough chit chat and let's get started, shall we? Who wants to go first? Jeremy, do you want to go first? Is that oh, okay? oh, yeah. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, don't you? Oh. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Jeremy. Yeah, thanks very much, Kathleen. Right. Um, that was really underwhelming. I'll go next. Um, Oh, it's a voucher to the Lucan Arms. To mom and dad, happy anniversary, lots of love, Amanda. Uh, dear it, dear it, this is an anniversary present from your daughter, and you, you've spent most of the vouchers. There's only 15 quid left. Ah, sure. I, uh, I didn't want to go over the spending limit. Do you know? Jeremy, the limit was like 30 euro. Ooh. Okay. Well, um, Sharon, why don't why don't you go next? Hmm. <laughs> Facial hair wax. Oh yeah, that was me. Uh, well, you know, Sharon, we all noticed you've been trying to grow a mustache here for the last while, so I thought you know we'd help you along. Oh, um, you're very welcome. <laughs> well, at least I can grow a mustache, Declan. Yeah, what the hell is that supposed to mean, huh? All right. Okay, guys. Brenda, why don't you just open yours? <clears throat> oh yeah, that's right. It's from me. It's cashmere. I got it from Brian Thomas. You know, the pay rise and everything. Like, don't worry, I did go over the spending limit. I just thought I'd spend a little bit more. But look, it's no big deal. What do you think, Brenda? It is ugly. It makes me want to vomit. But like, it's cashmere. It's from Brian Thomas. Uh, right. Joan, why, why don't you go next? Fine. Sharon. <laughs> now it's a little book. A hundred natural remedies for aging skin oh i hope you love it mm -hmm. yeah no like this is great honestly probably would suit jeremy a little bit better than myself but no thank you sharon thanks <laughs> no problem at all always looking to help a gal out okay well i'm the only one left so Uh, oh, it's, it's moving. It's, it's, ah! 
What? She they got what? her an ant farm. You posted an ant farm to her house? Yes. Oh, uncle. Did you get my gift? Uh, sorry, Brenda. We were only supposed to get gifts for our secret Santas. Did you get me a present, Brenda? I, uh, I didn't get you anything now. Um, I'm not your godfather, am I? No, I just wanted to get something for my wonderful uncle. Ah, that's, uh, that's very kind of you. What'd you get me? A special egg. A special egg? What do you mean? I got it from the dark web. All right. Oh, God, was that that big black rotten thing outside the door? God, the smell of it. The missus went mad. <laughs> I'm happy you liked it, Uncle. Brenda, you're a messer just like your mother, huh? Two hours later. Can I stand up? One more time now, right? The boys of the NYPD choir were singing all way big, and the bells were ringing out oh, Christmas Day. Yeah! Woo! Jesus, you always knew Sharon was the most toned down reporter we had, but Jesus Christ. All right, guys. Right. But thanks, Jeremy, for that. That was uh, lovely, as always. <laughs> a lot of John. Um, look, anyway, do you hear about Mary? I can't believe she's an anti-masker. It's awful. Can you really not believe it, though? I mean, she's always been so weird about that stuff since the pandemic started. Yeah, like one time I suggested we cover the rise of the far right in Ireland. And she was like, oh, well, then you'd have to cover war crimes committed by the Social Democrats. The Social Democrats didn't commit any war crimes. I know. That's why it was weird. All right, lads. What's the story with the new boss? Like, what's the uh, I heard she's from the States. Why do you assume it's a woman? Ah, because if I assumed it was a man, then you and S. Joan W. over here would be all over me, wouldn't you? <laughs> Who cares who it is? As long as we still get our 12 weeks holiday next year, I'm happy. Uh, you get 12 weeks holidays? <laughs> I only get six. Listen, I heard this new boss is like really strict. He used to work for like Fox News or something big like that. Anyway, top of their game. They covered the kidnapping of Kermit the Frog. Oh, wow. Kermit the Frog. I know. Yeah, no, God, I remember that. That was um, that was the time Sharon went missing for a couple of days back in March, wasn't it? Peace and quiet. It was amazing. If you went missing, no one would miss you, that's for sure. No, then I wouldn't be missing, would I? <laughs> Anyways, it sounds like whoever it is, they're going to shake things up around here. You know, I'd hate to have been recently moved to a new position. You know, like the nine o'clock news, maybe? Hey, okay. you're talking about me. <laughs> Look, if the last boss believed in me, then why should the next? <laughs> To be fair, John, the last boss also believed in COVID-19 conspiracies. So. <laughs> You're so funny, dear bitch. Uh, hopefully the next boss will be as happy as Mary was about you coming 20 minutes late to every meeting. Hold on a minute, right? Oh, uh, and hopefully they'll be okay with Declan saying and doing inappropriate things on TV. Now, look, Sharon, that was an easy mistake. When I see you, I just, I think STI. What else am I supposed to say? Oh, right. And what's your excuse for wearing your boxers on live television? No, all right. Look, I've already explained this one to you. It's it's inefficient. It's unnecessary. You know, we're newsreaders. We're, we're, our legs are under a desk the whole time. Who's looking, you know? Wow, you're really a model reporter, aren't you, Declan? No, actually, I gave up the modeling a while back. Just decided to focus on journalism, you know? But thank you. <laughs> so this is you focusing on journalism, is it? Yeah, yeah, it is actually. What are you trying to say? Hmm. I see. Sure, Logan. We're all just passing the time, right? Bringing home our few grand a week. Grand. I need to talk to HR. This is what I've been talking about. Oh my god! Why are you in Black Rock? 
as we saw in the footage from the Christmas party, six o'clock news presenter Sharon Mannion appears to be frustrated by something that happened on air with co-presenter Declan O'Rourke. Let's take a look. <clears throat> A man has died in County Sligo today following an incident with a Tesco food delivery van. The man was travelling through Sligo town on a unicycle when the crash occurred. The contents of the van, which was mainly tinned food and toilet roll, poured onto him, leading to his immediate death. Guardi has said that if there hadn't been such a large number of tins, the middle-aged man may have survived. The buyer has asked that their identity remains unknown was it you who made that order Declan ha, surely you know by now Sharon my mother does all the shopping for me oh yes one of the many reasons why I have no respect for you whatsoever anyhow over to you Declan <laughs> thank you Sharon for that totally unwarranted personal comment mm. well Leo Varadkar was once again seen topless in Phoenix Park in the midst of the current level five lockdown. Witnesses of the incident were extremely confused when they saw the former Taoiseach standing alone in the park on the windy, rainy day. One came forward and said that while it was somewhat understandable for him to do so during the summer months, it was completely unnecessary for him to reveal so much skin in these current weather conditions. Varadkar has spoken out and said that while he appreciates people's concerns, he's entitled to spend his free time doing Whatever he wishes. Back to you, Sharon. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, sorry, my apologies. This just in, um, another witness has come forward and said that there was an onlooker at the event who was disappointed to find that the topless man in Phoenix Park was over the age of 21. The witness has stated that this onlooker was, in fact, Sharon Mannion, 47, present STI, <clears throat> forgive me, RTI News. <laughs> Very funny, Declan, and not inappropriate at all. But I actually don't approve of people not being fully dressed in public. However, reports have said that you deem it acceptable to not wear pants while presenting the news. Well, you know what, Sharon? I actually, I'm actually I am glad that you've raised this issue because this is something that's been on my mind for, the for sake a while. Of our I don't viewers, see what the problem is. This in this scene was cut. The next week at work, Lauren and Stephen were called into a meeting with the new news director, Jane Williams, after the incident that occurred on the six o'clock news. Is today a special occasion or something? <laughs> Why do you say that, Sharon? Well, you know, Declan appears to be on time and, <gasps> wait, fully dressed? <gasps> Rather strange, don't you think? Yeah, I can only apologise, Sharon. I know how much you love seeing men with no clothes. Oh no, sorry, I'm wrong. That was the, the work experience, lads, wasn't it? Yeah, I forgot about all those children that you were just spying on. We were all over the age of 21, FYI. <laughs> I'm a lot more man than you, if you know what I mean. Guys. Excuse me? Guys, quiet, please. Uh, are, are you gonna... I have something very important and serious to discuss with you. Oh, was Joan right? Are we getting raises? That's amazing. Or, or I mean, you know, if I could propose something, maybe you've maybe Sharon isn't quite cut out for this kind of thing. Not worthy of sharing my spotlight. Just gonna, you know, just look. We can talk about that later. The raise comes first. Well, excuse me, but I believe an unworthy character is someone who is incredibly incompetent and a complete embarrassment um the kind of person who would i don't know stand up on live television in their boxers look i could argue that was an extremely courageous action oh yeah right now, look i'm sorry sharon you have to realize that as a working man there are certain things that i do and th certain things i don't so no i don't wash my clothes i didn't have clean trousers that day sue me there's a pandemic on that's that's enough uh you know it is in fact that little stun of yours that i want to talk about uh, no, <laughs> hang on uh, who who's this guy here Listen to me. Oh, look, I'm sorry, Jane, but you've let a random man into our Zoom call and I want to find out what's going on. Oh, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's Dan. 
Dan? Oh. Um, Hi, guys. Um, nice to meet you all. Who? Dan, hi, first of all. Um, hi. Here. Look, uh, uh, the clan, I'm not sure how to put this nicely, so... Um, Declan, actually. I won't. But... Um, you're fired. Yeah. I, I, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's some <laughs> problem with the technology. I don't think I heard oh, that. My <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. You are no longer employed here. Oh my god, this is... <laughs> See, when people are unemployed, it, um, it means, it means they don't have a job. And, and up to you, Declan, that definition, you don't have a job. No, but, but this yeah. is... Oh, and I'm um, Dan, Dan Hill here replacing you. What? Dan! <laughs> I'm so glad to have you on board. You know, a fresh face <laughs> is exactly what we need here at the six yeah. o'clock news. <laughs> Um, hi everyone, <clears throat> pleasure to be here, really looking forward to working with you all. Um, Deco, I'm a huge fan, super excited to be filling your shoes. I want nothing more than to uphold your legacy. Honestly, Deco, it's, for me, it, it's such an honour. Hey, Dan, shut the fuck up. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. You yeah, you're replacing me with the man who has Ikea curtains for hair. What is this? Um, man? Those are actually Armani. Um, but thanks for I'm noticing. I'm going to fucking kill you. Um, oh, Declan. Um, I don't even know why you're still here. No, no. Jane, Jane, this is, this is absurd. I mean, I mean, you're making a massive mistake. I'm the only reason the ratings have been as high as they have for years. Yeah, actually, you created nothing about bad publicity, and you've cost me a lot of money. What, you've been here a week, what do you know? It's exactly, Declan. See, you're just yeah. not the RTI image. Just, just yeah. shut up, Sharon, Jesus. Uh, you know, Deco, I, I really don't think there's something that you should be upset about. You know, change is almost always a positive thing. You know, my personal motto, with the lie I live by, is new is always better. <laughs> Especially when new is me. <laughs> hey, Dan, Dan, I really don't need to hear art student bullshit right now. No one's talking to you, shut the fuck up. Actually, the clan, um, it's you who should shut up. So... No, hang on, no, I'm not finished here. This is important. What you don't need fame team to understand. There we go. This is ridiculous. You can't do this to me. There we go. Okay, um, bye. Um, so, sorry about that. <laughs> Um, let's continue. Um, Dan, would you like to finish up um, what you were saying, you know, before you oh, were rudely um, interrupted? Right. Well, I just wanted to say that basically it's always been my dream to work for RTI. I've only been here an hour and I can already tell that you guys oh, have such an incredibly inspiring and cohesive unit, and I believe. A bit of hard work, but elbow grease, some dedication, a dash of handsome ambition, despite the recent challenges. Together, we can improvise, adapt, and overcome. Oh, you know, Dan, I think you and I are going to have a very good time working together. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are with six o'clock news presenters, Sharon and Declan. So, Declan, why did you think it was a good idea to stand up without any pants on live television? Uh, honestly, Bear, I, 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 don't, I don't see what the, what the issue is here. You know, there are men all over the country who aren't wearing pants going to work. I, I yes, but I the majority care. of those men aren't standing up without any pants on national television. They normally remain sitting, and therefore their lack of pants goes unnoticed. Well, you see, the, I think the, the most the important difference there is that um, they're cowards, and I am not. Uh, I think I'm the only one who had the, the courage to do it. The only one, um, the only one with balls, you know? 
the fact that you felt the need to prove to us you had balls is interesting. Okay, well, look, the choice of words here isn't important. I didn't, I didn't feel the need okay. to prove anything. <laughs> Thank you, you Declan. Just, I... So, Sharon, do you think it was right of Jane to fire Declan? Oh, absolutely. You know, that kind of behaviour is just unacceptable at RTI, and people like Declan will just tarnish the RTI image. As you know, it be so, uh, <clears throat> so uh, sad to see my old friend Declan go. But I think it's time we had someone new take his seat. You know, a fresh, new, handsome face. Someone as good looking and as talented as me. <laughs> yes, I, I think I think it's interesting that Sharon decided to emphasize that word old there, you know, considering I think it's important all the viewers at home realize that this is you're looking at a 48 year old corpse right here. Uh, <laughs> at her birthday last week. So um, <laughs> whatever helps you sleep at night, Declan. <laughs> so back to you, Declan, what is your response? Honestly, uh, this is this is good for me. This is good for me. I think you know, RTI was growing stale, and I mean, the new management is clearly, they don't have a clue what they're doing. Um, so I, I can't see RTI remaining as an institution for that much longer. And so honestly, I'm glad I got out when I did. Um, you know, moving on to bigger, bigger and better things. Um, so uh, speaking of which, I'm a busy man, so I'll take my leave now. It's been good talking to you. Bye. Well, thank you, Declan. <laughs> <laughs> It's not fair. So, Sharon, um, I did my heart what do you think I of your so hard for so long? I mean, your career. <laughs> Mute yourself. You just mind you. your own business, Sharon. You. <laughs> I'm not gonna mute myself now. Thank you, Declan. What's it like being news director at RTI? Excuse me, I'm just sending an email. Um, what'd you say? You've made a lot of changes recently, barring Miss Baskin and Declan O'Rourke. Look, Mr. Fries, I didn't have a choice. Mrs. Baskin was a complete lunatic. I've had to get a restraining order since firing her. Restraining order? What about Declan? What Declan did? Completely unacceptable. That shit isn't tolerated in my news station. Excuse me, I've um, mm. got another e urgent email. Urgent okay. emails? How did you react to the public's reaction? Like, am I worried? Like, of course I'm worried there. You know, like, regardless of what happens, I'm the one who's going to get the blame. And of course people are going to scrutinize me, you know? Like, people are just fucking savage. Mm. <sighs> people are savage. Well, yes, like, especially to someone as successful and powerful as me, like, we're just always the targets, you know, and like, it's not my fault that I'm just so successful, mm -hmm. like, everyone wants to tear me down. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Everyone wants to tear <laughs> Jane down. Moving on to Dan. So, Dan, tell us how you came to be a news anchor on RTI. <laughs> well, where to begin? Well, you know, Bear. <laughs> Can I call you Bear? Honestly, it's your classic rags to riches story, you know? Rags to riches. Interesting. So, you attended the private school, Clon Go, generally associated with the Lads, lads, lads culture and stinking rich people. Um, uh, uh, well, I, I don't think expensive education is really a factor. I mean, 
we only had one cricket pitch, so it was it was there were some hard times, hard times. Just the one. Um, interesting, yes. interesting. Um, anyhow, so working for RTI has always been a big dream of mine, you know. And mm. as much as I adore and respect Deco, mm. what he did was just it was unforgivable. There's a line, you know, that he crossed it. Unforgivable. You know, it crushed me when he pulled that terrible stunt that tore my heart right out. Mm. I just care so much about the eye, it hurts. <laughs> Having so many people walking up to him and admiring him and then to pull something like that. The whole experience was <laughs> utterly traumatizing. Trauma. All over the country, all over the world, dreams just crushed. <laughs> Excuse me. Crushed. Oh, I know why. <laughs> Man has, has walked out in tears. I guess that's the end of our interview. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, I'm still here, yes. Um, but you know... Not. As I've said at times like this, we have to improvise, adapt, overcome. Overcome. Well, thank and you, Dan. Us, I am the thank handsome you. change that Orsi so much. terribly needs. Perhaps this is all just for talking to us. Destiny. Destiny. And we'll end it there. Here is a clip of Sharon Mannion and her new co-host, Dan McDermott, on the Six O'Clock News. Dublin Zoo may be facing closure due to financial difficulties brought on by the public health crisis. The zoo has launched a public fundraising campaign to plug the 10 million hole in its finances. And it said, if it did not receive this additional funding, the zoo would have to close permanently. If closure is unavoidable the animals will be left to fend for themselves in Phoenix Park and surrounding areas. While locals have voiced their concerns about the animals wandering free around their homes, the zoo responded saying that while releasing the animals is potentially dangerous, there is simply nothing else they can do. Former Taoiseach Leo Varadkar has come forward and said that whenever he is out in Phoenix Park, he will check on the animals to see how they're doing. The closure of Dublin Zoo would, would be a complete tragedy. It's all of us and we, as a people, must do what we can to save it. Imagine not having the option of seeing exotic animals whenever you want. <laughs> Everyone at home, please, give what you can. Think of the flamingos. Over to you, Sharon. Thank you, Dan. Your compassion is just so adorable. <clears throat> Coming up after the break, Taoiseach Michal Martin has decided to donate a million euro to several gambling agencies after having lost 100 grand betting on Paddy Power. <clears throat> that is all for tonight. <clears throat> Baskin will be replaced by reporter Anne Foley. So Anne, how did you get into journalism? In the year 2013 to 2017, Anne studied English studies in Trinity, while attending university, Anne became heavily involved with the student newspaper in which Anne first gained experience as a journalist. Interesting. And how did Anne come to work at OTI? Having received her bachelor's degree, Anne went on to obtain a master's degree in journalism in rival college, University College Dublin, known more popularly as UCD. In January 2021, Anne was recruited by RTI 
to step in for infamous news reporter Brenda Baskin, who was recently revealed to have zero to no qualifications and a number of personality disorders. We wish Brenda Baskin the best of luck with her health. Interesting. And how has working here been so far? Since beginning this job on the 8th of January 2021, Anne has attempted a number of Zoom calls with co-workers and news director Jane Williams. Anne is currently in an interview with popular documentary host Bear Fries. And what do you think of your co-workers? No further comments. It's very possible that news presenters Sharon Mannion and Joan Fogarty feel threatened by the new reporter, especially Joan, who was bumped up from the one o'clock news herself. However, the girls have decided to get acquainted with their new co-worker. Are they doing this with the intention of making a friend or tearing down a co-worker? Let's find out. I was over the moon, you know. Uh, you got to tell me how you did it, how you got rid of them. Cause... It's going to be Jeremy next, I'm telling oh, you. Literally. All these old ones coming out and the new ones coming in. I know. Anne, have you heard? Um, I saw her in a meeting there the other day. She looked kind of like young or something, you know? Like, she seems like fresh out of college, I guess. Yeah, like, where did they even pull her out of? Uh, God only knows. I bet she has, like, no experience at all. Yeah, definitely. Oh, she's in the waiting room. No. Oh, my God. Oh. oh my god hi babes hey how are you hey girl nice to meet you <laughs> good evening it's 20 minutes to 10 what is this meeting in relation to uh, well you know we always have a little zoom drinky poos on a friday you know like the vibes girly vibes girly boys just after work and we haven't really got a chance to introduce ourselves to you and like get to know you you know we wanted to have a little drinkies on zoomies with that oh, like exactly so to kick things off what are you drinking tonight we're on the gnts obviously <laughs> and will not be drinking tonight According to reports, binge drinking rates have increased drastically in the Republic. Um, all right. <laughs> so, tell us how you're finding it. How you finding more TI? Yeah. Like, oh, what do you think of Kathleen and Jane? Go on. Kathleen O'Sullivan is a qualified reporter, and Jane Williams is a renowned news director with international experience. No further response. <laughs> no, but Anne, like, what do you, like, really think of them? Um, to reiterate my previous statement, no further response. Anne, is this like a little joke or something? Are <laughs> you doing a little skit right now? <laughs> you're like, surely you must be messing with us. <laughs> I, Anne, you're gas. Is this a joke? Yeah, <laughs> She's so funny. Comedy is not one of Anne's interests. Anne can answer questions in relation to business, current affairs, entertainment, and sport. Are you still joking? Is it because like we're news presenters or something? I don't, I don't really get it. Yeah. Like, why, why, are you, why are you speaking in the third person? Surely you've got, like, a bit of goss or something, you know, something yeah. about yourself, a bit of goss. The hot topic of the moment. Parents want to know when their children will be returning to schools. This week in Celebrity Gossip, Nathan Carter's income has been impacted by the current pandemic, and he has now resorted to illegally selling multi-pack wagon wheels separately at a raised price. It, news story I did like last week. Yeah. Do you have any gossip about yourself or about people at work? You know, scandals. Oh, have you heard about Jeremy O'Shea? The rumors. Oh my god, yeah. Due to lack of evidence, I will not be commenting on this subject. 
Uh, right. Great. Super fun Friday night. Yeah, cheers, girlies. <laughs> So, Joan, Sharon, tell me, what is your opinion of Anne? Oh, Anne. Yeah, she's great. I mean, like, super interesting, you know? Such a character. Yeah, she seems well-equipped for the job anyway. Perfect for the news reading, anyway. Yeah. Loads of personality. <laughs> interesting. And what prompted you to invite her to what is referred to as Zoom drinks? You know, I mean, like, we just wanted to get to know her a bit, you know, get her new co-worker in and have a few drinkies, you know? Yeah, and just have a bit of a girl night. Yeah. Interesting not to gather some information on her which could possibly be used against her. Oh my God, of course not. No, why would we do something so awful? <laughs> you know, Bear... You really don't know us at all. Like, we're not like that. So neither of you feel threatened by her? Threatened? <laughs> oh, of course not. You know, look, I definitely don't have anything to worry about, you know? Well, I can't say that for everyone, but I wish little Anne all the best, you know? Like, presenting the nine o'clock news, which is what I do, you know? It's where everyone wants to be. I'm kind of like top of the top like creme de la creme you know of course some people might find it difficult to deal with that kind of pressure but I just think you know I can't really get further up from here I'm cemented in my position I'm comfortable in RTI comfortable interesting and, and what about you Sharon personally you know I think that I don't have any reason to feel threatened I think it's safe to say that my position at RTI is fairly cemented you know I've been presenting the six o'clock news for a couple of years now, and I have a brand new co-host, Dan. And we look great together, and everything's going well for me. If I was someone who, I don't know, had recently been bumped up to replace someone else, I might feel somewhat threatened. Usually when you're in that kind of position, you're cautious as soon as you land. You know, replacements just aren't really built to stick. But fortunately, you know, that's not the case for me. That's not the case for me. Interesting. Joan, is it true that you got bumped up from the one o'clock news yourself? Do you think this puts you in a risky position? Look, no, not at all, actually. Do you know, it's true. They're always looking for fresh faces here at RTI. Um, but look. I think if we're looking at facts, I think that my face is a little bit fresher than yours, Sharon. Look, I'm, I'm just stating the fact. So you don't fear that she might replace you as you replaced Phone Gogarty, sorry, Fiona Gogarty? Look, the whole Fiona Gogarty thing, you know, it brings up some emotions for me. And it's, it's difficult, you know, because like you're watching this person and you want this position you're looking up to them they are the face of 40i you know you want that life and then they become involved in this public scandal and they tarnish their own image they tarnish it as well as the image of 40i they bring them into the dirt and you know it would actually it would break your heart and the fact that Fiona Gergerty released that monstrous temper reporting such a huge news story. It was just, oh, I'm sorry, it was just too much. It was just too much. Let's take a look. Peter the Penguin has finally returned to Dublin Zoo. Just four days ago on March 26, the four-year-old penguin was kidnapped for ransom. Gardaí have said that the perpetrator was in fact a seven-year-old boy who needed €1,000 to purchase a PlayStation 5. Luckily, security footage from the scene... Go on, I just said no. Who did already? I was checking the bus. There's no man down there. Security footage you from the scene... Dinner. What are you doing in there? Would you, would you excuse me just well, a moment? Would, would, would you excuse me just, just a excuse moment? Excuse me, there's nothing around. I'm a bit around Excuse me just a moment. Famous, you want to hurt it? What the f you stupid? F what the f I'm on live f television? Live f television? F television. F Thanks for
for returning after that emotional scene, Joan. Yeah, well, like, of course, it's sad and all, and it took me some time to recover, you know? But, like, I'm over it now. You know, I just get over it. And, like, this is my time, you know? I'm not going anywhere. I'm hungry, I'm ambitious, and I'm gorgeous. I'm not afraid of a challenge, you know? And I'm also not afraid of a challenge. Well, there you have it. Well, T.I. is a jungle. What's more dangerous? Lions or news reporters? Or even Irish cows? Join us next week as we take a delve into one of the most dangerous places of all time, the Irish farm. Thank you and stay safe. Good afternoon, these are today's headlines. Uh, hey, how are you getting on? What's the story? How are you, what are you up to? Oh stop, I'm absolutely exhausted for the week, but like, good news, Declan got fired. So oh, No way, that's great. Yes, a highlight of my week, I must say. Oh, delighted for you babes, delighted. Well, Three of my very close friends, Rachel, Sammy, and Seagull, they live on Trinity campus. Well, at least I can grow a moustache, Declan. Yeah, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta grow a moustache or speak, can you? Yeah, oh, okay, what the hell is that supposed to mean, huh? Right, children, pipe down. Brenda, why don't you open yours? This is what I've been talking about. Oh my god, why are you in Black Rock? Oh my god! Um. <laughs> Selling the <mode. laughs> And you're... Is she gone? <laughs> what? God, I hope so. I know, I know. freak! Well, Anne, are, are you frozen there, Anne? Pack wagon. Do you have any pets? Alan has five cats and a parakeet. The cats' names are Jane, Elizabeth, Henry, Jemima, and Edward. Edward is a rag doll. Jemima is a sphinx cat. Elizabeth okay. is a Siamese cat. <laughs> Interesting. It's actually quite tough for my people as well. We've had an incident with Matt Damon and I'm reporting on it as well. So I think- Oh, shush, shush, shush. Sorry, I'm going on there now. I'm going on. Sorry, my moment. Right. Jeez, you know what? I could do with an old, uh, an old burger or something. Huh? Fucking starving. I'm <laughs> sure aren't you always, Jeremy? <laughs> You're not wrong there, John. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> what, kind of way, what kind of name is Bear Fries? Jeez. Well, what's that about? Sounds kind of a Bear Grills. I found that a bit weird. <laughs> Uh, but like bear grills, alright. Yeah. God. I don't know, like it's it's really good. It's oh, pushed, pushed, pushed. Sorry, we're going on, we're going on. Coming up after the break, a middle-aged woman has been spa motherfucker. <laughs> oh. After Matt Damon has spouted out, eh, uh, oh, uh, I just fucked it. Ah. Uh, Sorry, it's okay. I don't even know. I was, I was like on the verge of fucking it the whole time. I kept reading the word poor, and it just, it just left me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Any hobbies? Anne enjoys taxidermy. Okay. So your Armani curtains. <laughs> yeah, they're new. Yeah, what do you think? I love a man with the expensive taste. No, oh, well, I, I wouldn't exactly say they're expensive, but they're a bit. <laughs> Stop the chandelier <laughs> in the background too. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, that, that one was a little bit more expensive, but you know, um, well, I aspire to a certain lifestyle. Good. Together. Working. Hmm. I, I think so too. Can't wait to work for you, Sharon. Alright, sorry, I'm busy being successful. That's so. all. Sorry, this is interrupting me being powerful in my email, so I'm gonna end oh, this. Oh, yeah. yeah, sorry, boss. So, John, <laughs> did you do anything, you know, interesting on the weekend? Um, well, I, I didn't get up to too much, but um, I did, I did uh, actually go on a date there at the weekend with this girl I met on Tinder. And you know what? I, I think we really hit it off. War G, I've said that if there had been such a large number of tins, the middle-aged man may have survived. <laughs> yeah. I think they might really like her. Um, so like, nice for you. <laughs> yeah, she was she was lovely. She was just so witty and charming and gorgeous. And you know what? Uh, I, I don't say any days, but you know when you get that feeling, like you, you just know you think and they might be the one. Mm. The boy. <laughs> oh, I, I think this takes a boss. I think we... Welcome to the boomer reel, everyone. <laughs> uh, okay. I know I'm, 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 not, I'm probably taking it too far too early. Like it's only a first date, but I have a good feeling about it. And you know, I'm getting nervous just thinking about it um, right now. But maybe that's because you know <laughs> we're about to go in there. But <laughs> wait, give me. Um... Brandon, do you want to do you want to keep going, or are we just stop? I think we can start that one again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what, what about you? Uh, have a nice weekend. Get up to much. You know yourself. So just busy. <clears throat> you know, yeah. looking after the house and mm. self yeah. and you no know, weekending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. yeah, now you're both looking at each other. Perfect. Okay, so <laughs> the, um, I'm just looking at your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know, Dan, I think you and I are going to have a very good time working together. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh. <laughs> I wish I could have timed that. Musical preferences? On a Friday night, Anne likes to listen to techno and is generally the life of the party. Anne likes to lis listen to techno and is considered the life of the party. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> That's really good. In the tree, Karen the boys of the NYPD choir are singing all the way. And the bells are ringing out for Christmas Day. All right, Jack, let's go. No, I'm okay, David. Thanks. We're singing, waving. Come on, John. And the bells were ringing out for Christmas Day. They march. Right, Kathleen, you're up next. In, two, three, Karanda. Beautiful. Oh, smash it. She frozen. No crack. You're no crack, Kathleen. No do crack. All right, Brenda, here's your moment. <laughs> yeah. All right, one more. No, come on. Sharon. And the boys. And my PV choir. We're so always here to do it, you know. The bell. <laughs> No, 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 no. We're God, you're <laughs> <laughs> I haven't warmed up, okay? 
<laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so brilliant, guys. 